There are lots of them. Medicines for industrial animal breeding. They're sold by companies like Siva, Hipra and MSD Intervet. They contain the hormone PMSG. Breeders are promised more money, more pregnant animals, more offspring, less work. The hormone is obtained from the blood of pregnant mares, an agonizing procedure and heavily criticized for years. And crucially, the EU's farm to fork strategy must create... In October 2021, the European Parliament decided by a large majority to ban EU imports and production. Now is the turn of the EU Commission. New investigations from Iceland show that it is high time. We've been investigating blood farms for seven years. After investigations in South America and Germany, we read that PMSG is obtained from pregnant mares in Iceland too. We came across Icelandic lawyer Arni Stefan Arnason. We met him in Reykjavik. Arni Arnason knows Iceland's animal welfare law inside out. No, PMSG production is not mentioned in it. He confirms, few Icelanders know about this business. A hidden business? We decide to go looking. Where are the blood farms and how are they recognized? How big are they? How can we tell that horses are blood mares? Icelandic horses have a global fan community. There are around 60,000 of them in Germany. They are often expensive. Many of Iceland's 90,000 horses are bred for meat production. But the blood business, we later find, is catching up quickly. Slaughtering prices for foals have been falling for years. We arranged to meet Requidur Hermansson. He's the only informant who dares to go on camera. Around 100 euros for a foal and 430 euros for the blood of its mother. For blood farmers, foals are now just a byproduct of the lucrative blood business. On Facebook, we find an image film produced by Icelandic pharmaceutical company Isteka. It paints a picture, idealized and incomplete. Blood donating mares are kept on more than 100 farms throughout the countryside of Iceland. The donation itself takes place in a calm environment with competence and expertise of the people involved, and a small blood sample taken. Inserting the cannula is not a shown. Man in for Cheerful music, calm workers and horses, blood extraction shown as the a peaceful procedure. Is five liters, one blood unit. Our doubts about the truthfulness of this image film are confirmed when we find the first blood extraction sites. What we see are wrecked, run-down restraint boxes, slippery floors, side walls with dangerous gaps, straps for the horses' backs so that they don't rear up. What happens here when horses get nervous? There's a high risk of injuries, as we will see numerous times. Each of these canisters hold five liters of blood. We take 10 days to look for blood farms. By the end, we will have found exactly 40. They are easily recognized by the restraint boxes, wood or metal. They look more like scrap than treatment facilities for horses. We still haven't found a blood farm in operation. We rethink our route. Hopefully, we will see some activity here. If not, should we keep going down here? At first, it's the same old story. Unsuitable boxes and Isteka blood canisters. Then we get lucky. A blood farm at work. We start the hidden camera and approach. We are stopped straight away. They don't want us to watch. A man holding two plastic sticks places himself in the way. In the background, blood mares in the restraint boxes. It's off limits. We are working. It's, it's really, really unpopular. We park 50 meters further along the path and watch what happens. We see a dog biting a horse and someone hitting a horse on the head with a stick in the background. The blood farmer stops. Clearly because of us, they hurt the horses away along the road, with dogs again. We drive on and notice that a grey SUV is following us. We stop to talk. It drives off. Another car arrives. 
a man gets out and knocks on our window. He is the manager of the pharma company Isteka. He admits that he had his vet follow us. We don't want photos being taken, he tells us. We're not ready yet. Although Isteka has been in the business for 40 years. The blood business has no influence on the number of foals slaughtered, he says. But the price of foals for slaughter has dropped dramatically. Although that has nothing to do with the blood business. We keep digging and he admits. The slaughterhouses see that farmers have other ways of making income, meaning the blood business. That's why they pay less for the foals. Which is why more and more meat producers are deciding to have their mares bled. We drive on, the weather gets worse. It's raining extremely heavily and the mares and foals have no shelter from the rain or wind. We find a seriously injured mare in a field. We watch her for four days to see if help comes. We inform the veterinary authority. Nobody helps her. We call the police. The wound is typical of a barbed wire injury, an expert later confirmed to us. Then suddenly there is a bang. A VW minibus rams into us. Go to your country! A man shouts at us. We try to get away. He follows us, tries to drive us into a ditch. We call the police. Please send someone soon. We are on 253, okay? We recognize his face. It's Baldur Eidson, one of Iceland's biggest blood farmers, producer of the dangerous restraint boxes and owner of a famous breeding stallion with a unique coat and eye color. Baldur is known in Germany as a breeder, but as a blood farmer? The pregnant mares are bled in late summer in Iceland. Five liters once a week for up to 10 weeks. Around 40 liters per mare, a lucrative business. 430 euros per mare, four times more than you can earn with a foal. We want to look closer at two blood farms. Blood farm number 38 and number six on our list. We recall the image film. Its statements, competent personnel, horses handed calmly. What we will see is chaos, confusion and horses being hit. Crammed together, nervous, scared. The mares know what's coming. The foals stand between them. A worker beats the horse with a long whip. We show the footage to Professor Stephanie Kremer from Justus Liebig University in Gießen. This poses a huge risk of injury for the foals. The adult horses can stand against it with their bodies and defend themselves. Here you can see scenes of mares rearing up against each other with the foals caught in between. They can't escape. They don't have the physical strength to stand up to them and can be squashed and injured. Same situation at Blood Farm 38. Horses being hit. In this scene, you can see this woman driving the animal violently into the blood extraction box. She targets the hind legs, the hocks and the cannon bones. These are especially sensitive to pain. They have a lot of pain receptors there. So we can assume that being hit there with an iron rod is extremely unpleasant and painful for the horse. For sure, this amounts to repeated traumatization. It is easy to recognize because we can see a very hefty defense response. The mare stands still. They try to escape backwards and refuse to go into the blood extraction box. 
Instead of calm handling, we see loud talking, laughter and frightened horses being treated roughly. The image film shows them being stroked. A mare doesn't want to go into the box, despite the blows and shouts. She is scared, but prefers the rod to being restrained and bled. The blows get harder. A foal panics and jumps over the barrier to her mother, gets caught and kicks. A worker comes and hits her several times on the head with his hand and whip to keep her out. We show some scenes to Arneson, the lawyer. Here we see a horse being hit multiple times on the neck and head with a post. That is horse cruelty and strictly forbidden. I mean, it's a criminal offence which by law could mean a heavy fine, imprisonment for up to two years and the loss of the licence to keep animals. No more keeping animals. The Azteca vet should intervene and report the violations to the authorities. He simply stands there, not taking action. That means he himself is breaking the animal welfare law. A worker calls Jimmy the dog to chase away the foals and horses. That is forbidden. When the dogs act aggressively, when they bark, when they bite a horse's tail or legs, this aggravates the flight reaction and defense response. The horse, of course, tries to escape a threat, and the dog is definitely perceived as a threat. This causes a mare to panic in the restraint box. She tears the cannula out. The vet puts it back in. He should forbid the use of dogs to chase horses. The tension among the mares is enormous. They bite the wooden doors and hit their heads against the bars because of the stress. When the whole body shudders, the horse is in a state of extreme aggravation. It tenses all its muscles and tries to get out of the situation. strap is designed to prevent the mare from rearing up. This restricts her freedom of movement even more and increases her fear. Again, stress biting on the wooden door. The blood extraction procedure is a succession of stressful episodes. The restraint box is unsuitable. The mare strikes a beam with her head multiple times. The head is fixed in an unnatural position. The puncture site for the cannula is anesthetized. The mare recoils. The cannula is inserted. Its diameter, half a centimeter. Her defensive reaction is fierce despite anesthetic. The cannula is removed after three to five minutes, sometimes by the vet, sometimes by workers. The insertion point is not checked by the vet. In this video, you can see the injection equipment being prepared for the next horse. It's clear that the cannula is not changed. It's just rinsed. And if there are any pathogens, then the infection risk is of course very high for the animals. What we notice is the neighing of mares and foals. Yes, you can see clearly how this dialogue between the mare and the foal is set off. 
and of course the foal perceives the commotion, as does the mare. They tell each other that they're in distress, and they convey their distress to each other. They can even amplify each other's perception that they are in a very dramatic situation. In dieser Wahrnehmung bestärken, dass sie in einer sehr dramatischen Situation befindlich sind. What does it mean when a horse phlegms? Dass das Pferd bestimmte Gerüche. It means the horse is processing certain smells, including stress smells. When a horse perceives a stress smell in such an environment, it can aggravate and worsen the horse's stress. Selber auch noch mal verschlimmern, aggravieren. The horses continue to show pronounced stress behavior after blood extraction. Putting the halters on the horses tends to be easier, but taking them off elicits a stronger defense reaction. This is because the blood extraction is experienced as enormously stressful. The mare is fixed in place, her head is tied unnaturally high, and inserting the cannula is unpleasant or even painful. A mare panics, falls and hangs her entire weight by her head. Aside from the risk of injury to the limbs, there's a very high risk in the head and neck area. A horse has very fine ligaments there, as well as mucous membranes. And you can imagine, if almost all the mare's weight is carried by the fixed head, and she might struggle as well, this can easily lead to ruptures or injuries of the structures in this area. Some time passes and we can clearly see how this woman turns around and notices that the horse has fallen, but does her other work first and only then turns her attention to the horse. The restraint boxes and raceways are very primitively built. It seems there's only one aim, blood extraction. The risk of injury is ignored. The spaces between the boards are traps. The legs can get stuck, which can injure the hoofs and joints. Yes, we see here how a mare is prepared for blood extraction. The head is fixed high. We can see that the mare is already very distressed. The nostrils flare. She tries to free herself and we can see her wide open, white eyes now and again. Now she uses her whole body and while trying to defend herself, she kicks out with her front legs puts her right front leg over the outer barrier and gets stuck there. We can see her hanging down, basically dropping. She tries to get out of the situation, struggles fiercely for a while, but can't do it herself. And here we can see how the horse has given up. The cannula is removed. The worker strikes the exhausted mare on her sensitive nostrils. Her eyes wide with panic. Instead of calming her down, he hits her again in the face. Now they try to free the horse from this situation. Shaking and wobbling, she staggers out of the box. With this experience in mind, she will be bled again in a week. Here we can see a mare running out of the box in a hurry, getting away as quickly as possible from the situation. A typical behavior for a flight animal. And here we see a mare coming out much slower. She shakes herself at first. She's basically coming to again. The mare staggers a bit. We can see her trying to regain her balance with her front legs. We ask Arneson, the lawyer, again about his legal opinion of the footage. The horses are hit and are panicking. Dogs are used to drive them. All that clearly contravenes the Icelandic animal welfare law. It is time for the EU Commission to act, to follow the EU Parliament's request and take the public seriously. PMSG is a cruel hormone. PMSG is superfluous. It only serves to maximize the profits of blood farmers, pharmaceutical companies and industrial animal breeders. Iceland should be the land of horses, 
not the land of 5,000 blood mares. Thank <laughs> you.